Welcome back. Let's now go and have a look at what's happening to a coil. We, something interesting as well is that we have another rule that we can use to find the direction of the magnetic field around a coil. This is called the right-hand solenoid rule. So, we've done the idea of what a coil is. We're going to be looking at this idea of the right-hand solenoid rule. Now, to really explain this, it's a method to find the north pole of a loop or a coil. Now, we've already established that when we looked at the, the loop, that it was an electromagnet, that it was, has, has a north pole and a south pole, and we looked at the, the one end, which happened to be from this end, and we recognized this is the south, and that over there is the north, and you see that. So what is this thing called the right-hand solenoid rule? Well, it's, it's kind of different, and it's quite interesting because it's quite useful to use. We don't have to use the ordinary right-hand rule in lots of different places, but we can simply use the right-hand solenoid rule directly. And so the way that it works is we're going to switch things around a little bit. Usually in a coil, we'll have more than one piece of wire. So we'll say there are many fingers on my hand, so that will indicate the direction of the current. Even when I've got a loop here, we'll take the direction of the current not to be the thumb this time, and if I do that, then you'll see that the curve of the fingers gives me the curve of the loop. So as I can say it's going in that direction, I'm showing you the direction of the curve of my fingers. Now the thumb here if I turn it, you'll see the thumb is pointing in. And the end of the thumb always indicates the North Pole. So if we do it next to the board here, you'll see that we're going around like that and we're pointing in. This side was the south side. The red arrows of the compass needles are pointing north. So the north side is on the other side of the loop. Let's have a look and apply that to this diagram. We recognize exactly the same scenario, the direction of the current. It's coming out of the board over here. It's going into the board over here. And guess what? It's pointing to the North Pole. Isn't that amazing? So the right-hand solenoid rule works. We've seen it in two situations. And here's the third one. And we recognize that this end we called the south end. Let's make sure that it's working. We take the curl of the fingers to show the direction of the current, and the thumb over here is pointing in. That means this side is not the North Pole. This side is the South Pole, just like we've confirmed it over there. So guys, this is an important rule that we're going to use as we investigate the magnetic field around a coil. So let's have a look at the simulation. And, and here's the simulation. I just want to point out that the coil here is wound in a particular way. The, 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 the wire over here, that's the positive terminal, that's the negative terminal, and you can see the wire is coming on top over here, and it's coming around in that direction, and goes around the back end there. So the direction of the current would be up on the side, it would be up on that side, it would be up on that side, would be up on that side, would be up on that side. And so we can start to apply the right-hand solenoid rule. And if you look at it, you recognize many wires. They're all pointing in that direction. The current is pointing in the direction. Which di which, where's the North Pole? The thumb is pointing to the North Pole. I'm saying the, thumb is the, the North Pole is there. That means the South Pole is there. Now, does this line up with what we've said about North and South? Well, absolutely it does. Look at that. The red arrows of the compass needle are all pointing away from the North, and they're on the outside, they're pointing in towards the South. And it gives you the butterfly configuration. They're not crossing over. They're recognizing that they're going in that lovely pattern that is exactly the same as a bar magnet. 
No wonder we call this an electromagnet. Well, let's go and do a little bit of playing now that we've done that. And here we've got some options to be able to, to change things around. The first thing that I want to do is I want to look at this pattern and I want to say, so what would happen if I change the current? So let's switch the current. And lo and behold, what can you see now? You can see that at this point here, the, the red arrows are pointing away from this side, where they're pointing in on this side. Switch the current again, and you'll see that on this side, they're pointing in over here, and they're pointing away over there. That's quite interesting. Now, to make it absolutely clear and plain, let's replace the compass needles with some field lines and represent them with arrows. And so what can you see? You can see these green arrows are pointing in at this side and they're pointing out on that side. So if we use the, the right-hand solenoid rule, recognize that the current is going to come in on this side, going up at the back over there, and it's going to come around. So which is the North Pole? The North Pole is in that direction. Now, just to confirm that I've got it right, let's use the big hand over there so you can see the graphic. The, the wires are wrapping around in that direction, and so we can see the North Pole is pointing in this direction over here that you can see where the thumb is. Now, <clears throat> the other option that we've got is to change the way the wire is curled. So if I switch the coil, and I just take the right hand off for a minute, it might not look like much has changed. But in fact, a lot has. The wire is going in a different direction. And that means the current is going in a different direction. The one time it was curled clockwise, another time it's curled anti-clockwise around this particular cylinder, depending on which side you're looking at it. So if I'm looking from this side, you'll see the wire is turning in that direction which is clockwise. If I'm looking from this direction, the wire would appear to be anti-clockwise. But so you can change the wire, and it's important that you look at these diagrams very carefully, because changing the way the wire is wound changes the direction of the, of the, of the field lines as well. So I've changed that. Have a look. We're going to say the wire, the current is in that direction. This is the North Pole. This area over here is going to the north. That is south. We use the compass needles, have a look. North, the reds are pointing in that direction. We use the right-hand solenoid rule. And no surprise, we've got the North Pole at this end. Guys, this is an important thing that you need to practice. And these simulations are great. Make sure that you, you get a chance to use them for yourself if you can. So, we've we've done a little bit of an investigation seeing how this can change and the effects of of the magnetic field i want to have another look at the representation of the um, magnetic field around a coil so the blue area here just represents a rod it could be a, an iron rod it could be a plastic rod it could even be some cardboard and what it's showing us is the way that the um, copper wire is around, around this particular um, coil. So what it's saying to us is on this side, all of these lines, the current is coming out of the board. It's coming out. And on this side, it's going in. Gives us the perfect opportunity to use the right-hand solenoid rule. Check it for yourself. Take a moment. Hold your hand in the right position, and you recognize that the fingers are going to come out over here on the right hand. They're going to curl in and go over there. Then this must be the North Pole, and that must be the South Pole. So how would I represent the field lines? Because that's what we wanted to show, is not just which is North and South, we want to actually show the direction of the field lines. We've shown the direction of the current, but let's show the direction of the field lines. And what we've said, every time we draw field lines, we recognize 
that they follow the same pattern. They come out of the North Pole, little compass arrows would point away from the North Pole, and they would be attracted to the South Pole. On the inside of the coil, they'll be running from south to north, and those would line up. On this side, we would find that the field lines do exactly the same thing. They run away from the, the North Pole. They run towards the South Pole. And we've got a complete loop. Now, guys, that's not the end of the story. Because what we've got to recognize is there are far more field lines. And this idea of a pole indicates that there are many more lines that would pass out. So we'd have to draw those in. But try and not get them to cross over like I've just done, because it's a little bit difficult on this board. And we'd recognize they're coming out of the north and coming in at the south. So practice drawing your field line patterns, particularly around a coil. Get used to looking at them at a different view. In this case, we're looking at a top view. Now, how else do you think we could look? Is there another orientation to look at a coil? Well, yes, there is. Let's imagine for a minute that we put our eye at this point over here. What do you think you would see if you looked directly at the end of the coil in that position? Maybe you'd like to even just take a piece of paper and sketch down what you might find. But don't, don't wait too long to do it because I need to move on. And I'm going to say this is a representation of a coil and the magnetic field associated with the coil. What I haven't indicated on the diagram is the direction of the current. So I've got to interpret this field line and I've got to be able to say to myself, is this a North Pole or is it a South Pole? How would I know the difference? Well, remember what we've just done. We've said at the North Pole, the field lines run out of the North Pole. They're coming out of the North Pole and they're moving around the magnet on the outside of the magnet or the outside of the coil. They're moving away from us. So on the inside of the coil, they move towards us. On the outside of the coil, they move away from us. And what have we got here? On this side over here, these magnetic field lines are coming out of the board and over here they're going in. So over here they're, they're, they're going out and on this side they're going in. So my conclusion is that my view over here is definitely a North Pole. So if it's a North Pole, in which direction is the current passing? Well, <clears throat> let's at this point pretend that this is the wire that's in front and let's say that's the wire that's at the back. And we're going to say that in this case, and even if we looked at it the other way, it would be the same. This is the direction of the North Pole. This is the North Pole. So we use our thumb as the North Pole. Remember, the right-hand solenoid rule. And the wires are curving around that way. So over here, the current is going up over there. It's going around over there. It's going around over there. It's going around. And eventually, it goes back out that way. And so we've been able to see the direction of the magnetic field as well as the direction of the current. So if we're going to change the field, we recognize we need to, we could increase the current, we could change the direction of the field, we could also increase the number of coils. And if we look at that, we recognize that electric fields have an important part to play in our environment. We have power lines, lots of current passing through the power lines. Current isn't very big. We use transformers to reduce the current. But these still have an electric field. Do they affect things? Well, we, the research about affecting humans isn't very evident. But we do know that many birds who navigate with magnetic fields do crash into these. And it could just be that they are very big birds and they think they can land and then they get shocked or they could actually be navigating towards them. We're not sure. Quick summary. 
Remember that the magnetic field around a loop is similar to a bar magnet. We use the right-hand solenoid rule to find the direction of the North Pole. And we can also use crosses and dots to show what's happening to the field lines. Please make sure you practice these. And don't forget that you need to always revise. So it's been great investigating this topic with you, and we'll see you again soon.